Hi. Did you know that there are 63 streams that flow into Lake Tahoe? Only one, the Truckee River, flows out. It flows out of Tahoe City and ends up in Pyramid Lake in Nevada. Scientists monitor creeks and streams by collecting water samples and performing other measurements. Let's go visit Scott to see what's involved. Hi guys, I'm at Ward Creek on the west shore of Lake Tahoe. The flow right now is about four cubic feet per second. That's about typical for the summer baseline condition. A lot of this erosion that you see here happened during the 1997 flood. We had very high flows. It was flowing about 1,200 cubic feet per second. It caused a lot of the banks to be undercut and a lot of these boulders fell in the stream and you could actually hear the boulders rolling along the stream bottom during the flood. It, it was incredible. So this is some of the fine silt that uh, erodes away from the stream bank at Ward Creek. It will eventually erode down into the stream and out into the lake. What I do to take a sample is I set up a line across the stream and use a depth integrated sampler. It allows you to take a sample up and down the water column. I'll move across the stream at equal widths and that allows you to get a representative sample of the stream flow. We're studying streams because they input both nutrients and fine sediments into the lake. The nutrients cause the algae to grow and the fine sediments cloud the water and both of those impact the clarity of Lake Tahoe. Thanks, Scott. The samples are taken back to the lab where the amount of fine particles and nutrients from each stream are measured. Fine particles and nutrients can also come from other places. They can flow directly from the land into the lake. This often happens in populated areas during storms. We call this urban storm water. My name is Andrea and I'm a stormwater hydrologist. This is an automated sampler. Automated samplers make it very easy to sample storms because you don't have to be out here to take every single sample by hand. We have tubes that suck water up into the sample bottles that we then take back to the lab to analyze for nutrients and sediments. With information about the levels of pollution in the stormwater, we can alert authorities to the biggest problem areas. One way to reduce the amount of polluted stormwater getting into the lake is to build new wetlands. These are called constructed wetlands. Our measurements have shown that wetlands can remove most of the pollutants before they enter the lake, turning that brown water into clean water. Unfortunately, many of the wetlands were lost to development, and now there's simply not enough flat land around Lake Tahoe to build all the wetlands we would need. Research has shown how important wetlands and streams are to the health of the lake. And that is why local regulatory agencies have implemented building regulations that protect these sensitive and important areas from further development. The other important source of fine particles and nutrients is, believe it or not, the air. <laughs> Where do the pollutants in the air come from? All sorts of places. Highway dust, car exhaust, wood-burning stoves or fireplaces, forest fires, leaf blowers, and agriculture from the Central Valley. We have air samplers at many places around the lake, and even on the research buoys on the lake. Thanks for visiting the Tahoe Environmental Research Center. We hope you can use some of the things you've learned here to keep Tahoe blue, and to keep all lakes, streams, wetlands, and the air healthy. See you next time.